Hello, I'm here in Stuttgart, Germany, talking to Christian Uhl, who is the CEO of RFID company SmartTrack. Christian, what role does SmartTrack play within our connected society? You know, if you look at today's world, there are about three trillion things being sold every year. But all these things are not connected uh, in a way. They are dumb things. They are just things being sold to consumers, to customers, to businesses. Just think of the opportunities you can derive if you make these things smart. And by smart we mean that you can digitally interact with these things, that you can identify without touching them. So this gives you opportunities, for example, if you are a consumer, you can check if a product is authentic when you, when you buy it. And uh, if you know how much damage is derived from product piracy, uh, it's an enormous thing. Think of pharmaceuticals, where you can be sure that it's not counterfeit pharmaceuticals. Think of supply chains, which become more efficient. Or think of retailers, which can do stock taking by a push of a button uh, on their shop floors. So RFID is enabling the expansion of the, the broader Internet of Things market? Dramatically so, we believe. Because at the end, um, whatever, whatever thing you have, you can, you can attach an RFID transponder to it. And then it's just a question of the amount of readers uh, in a given environment, uh, uh, how, much, how, how visible you can, make, you can make these things. For, for example, we did, a, um, we did an implementation with a retailer in the US and here we tagged about 15,000 items and the amount of reads we had per day were about 150 million reads. So imagine the amount of information uh, and things you can learn from these, uh, from these reads uh, in any given days. Whilst the Internet of Things is, is a relatively new term, RFID has been around for a lot longer, hasn't it? RFID actually is a very, very old principle. To my knowledge, it was already used uh, uh, during World War II for some technical applications. Um, it really gained traction um, in the, I would say, mid-90s, when first uh, contactless access systems uh, um, uh, evolved. Um, think of ski resorts uh, where you now, nowadays don't have to put off your gloves in order to enter uh, the lifts. Um, and then the real push for RFID uh, came with public transport systems, but even more so with increased, increased security requirements uh, when you think of government products like passports uh, and so forth. In recent years, though, um, as the technology further evolved, production technologies evolved, uh, the transponders became more, uh, more cost efficient. Um, we are also we are now getting down to item level tagging, for example, in the retail industry, where more and more retailers use this to increase shop floor visibility, to prevent, uh, to lower theft rates, uh, and so forth. How is the RFID market evolving? What advances are we going to be seeing? We would see, you know, the the, the market for RFID. We see it two. Uh, we see it actually three folds. Um, so there's a there's an uh, area of RFID which is really about increasing security levels: passports, uh, government products, uh, uh, birth certificates, um, high security access cards. But even in public transport system in today's world, security plays plays a big role. Um, the second part uh, really is all about efficiency of, uh, of processes within corporations uh, and so forth. Think of supply chain, seamless supply chain, um, uh, managing supplier networks and moving goods through your supply chain and have full visibility by reading uh, these goods uh, continuously. And the third area of, uh, of RFID we see is strongly evolving is actually um, all around consumer interaction. Um, at the end, if you, if you talk about NFC, you're talking about RFID. And in today's world, with the rollout of, uh, of uh, smartphones, um, with, uh, with NFC in, uh, readers uh, included, um, every consumer basically has a chance to uh, interact with RFID, with NFC uh, transponders. Um, where we see an explosion of readers in the market, which will then drive further use cases going forward. Is NFC still a viable technology? It's been around a number of years now, and it still hasn't quite got the momentum that many thought it would. 
Yeah, it's true. It took it took it took some time for NFC to develop, but uh, actually within SmartTrack we are very very enthusiastic about uh, uh, NFC going forward. You know, if you look at uh, today's uh, smartphones, virtually every smartphone nowadays has an NFC uh, reader uh, included, and um, this enables completely new use cases because every consumer basically has an RFID slash NFC reader in his hand. So if you think of uh, uh, authentication applications, for example, where you say a consumer wants to find out if a product he bought um, is really an authentic product, and then the brand owner uses this initial content or contact to then further interact with their consumers, you know, it's, it's not thinkable without NFC. So therefore, um, we see more and more use cases going forward and we see more and more volume uh, uh, and interest from our customers. So we are very enthusiastic about the future prospects of NFC. With the amount of RFID enabled tags and, and devices out there in the market and these numbers increasing, how do you as SmartTrack help service providers and enterprises who are managing these large networks how do you help them with the increasing amount of, of data that's generated? That's a very good point. Um, in today's world, as a leading, as the world's biggest uh, manufacturer and provider of RFID transponders, we see that one obstacle for growth for our company is really that the system integration and, and the use cases and to support use cases for our, for our customers, businesses and consumers uh, need uh, a completely new way of thinking. Uh, it needs not only uh, new backbones in IT systems and other ways of looking at data and amounts of data, but also often requires cultural changes at our customer levels in how to deal with these uh, uh, new information. Um, in, for this, in this respect, we have developed a very comprehensive end-to-end -end, uh, software platform, which is called Smart Cosmos. With Smart Cosmos, we help our customers to manage portfolios and populations of RFID transponders to put them basically in action to facilitate uh, and easily manage processes and then to very um, easily interact with uh, our customers' legacy systems, thus ERP systems like SAP or Oracle. What are the challenges and obstacles that service providers and network operators should be aware of when deploying and managing Internet of Things services? We are working together with lots of these uh, um, service providers and, and network owners and I think that the, the current uh, evolution of data transfer rates uh, like LTE and so forth are, are really helping in, in facilitating uh, uh, RFID adoption. Um, for us it's uh, important to work closely together with these service providers because at the end, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big revolution. It's not uh, just a little bit bits and pieces here and there. If, if a company, a bigger, a larger company, really embraces RFID, it changes significant, it changes basically everything within this company. It changes the processes, it changes the way of how to look on things, it changes the level of transparency uh, and so forth. And SmartTrack is a great partner to help corporations to do this. But SmartTrack can't do it and won't do it alone. We need partners like the big service providers uh, to help us uh, being the best uh, provider for our customers.